Tonight, local business owners say Governor Newsom's COVID relief bill is simply not enough. The governor is promising relief of up to $25,000 for small businesses. The amount is based on a business's annual revenue in its most recent tax return. Also under the deal, small businesses can deduct up to $150,000 from state taxes if they received a PPP loan. Now, we spoke to a salon owner in Stockton who is $300,000 behind in rent. $25,000, I'll take it, but it doesn't really do anything to get me financially whole again. The deal also promises to waive fees for restaurants and bars that serve alcohol and to barbers and cosmetologists. We're getting answers tonight on the state's relief package. There you see CBS 13 political analyst Gary Dietrich. Gary, how does the state economic relief plan differ from the federal paycheck protection program? Well, there are substantial differences, Tony, and this is part of, I think, the confusion and the frustration for many small business owners. In the federal PPP plan, there's a set of criteria. If you meet the criteria and the funding hasn't run out, you're in. But in the state grant program for small businesses, there are a number of criteria. It's set up almost as a competitive grant, where if you have certain criteria, for example, minority owned or women owned, or for example, rural business, you're scored higher in the score, and you may be more eligible than others might be. So conceivably, a business right next door to another one might not receive a loan where that other person does. And I think that's right now part of the confusion and perhaps frustration. Yeah, there certainly is plenty of frustration out there, Gary. Let's talk about another hot topic here, a reopening schools. We know California Teachers Association or CTA is out with a brand new ad campaign pushing for strict safety measures. Let's take a look at the ad and we'll talk more on the back end. COVID's still a threat, and on reopening schools, we know what happens when we ignore proper ventilation or rates of community spread. The teachers union says schools shouldn't be opening at all without things like proper ventilation, testing and contact tracing programs and social distancing. They also say teachers should be prioritized for vaccines. So Gary, the teachers union showing how powerful they are certainly, but can this backfire and do they simply have too much power? Well, Tony, this is a real problem because the governor had wanted schools to open this month in February. Now it looks like it may be several more months at best, maybe not at all this school year. And the CTA, the California Teachers Association, has long held a lot of sway inside the Capitol and right now seems to be doing the same. I mean, there was supposed to be an agreement apparently last week with the CTA and the governor and the legislature on moving this plan forward for reopening. But apparently as of right now, there is nothing yet agreed on on the table. So I think there's still a ways to go. And certainly CTA is indeed flexing its muscle. They would say for their you know, sake of the teachers and the students, but there's a lot of frustrated parents and administrators and others who are raising a lot of questions about that. Yeah, finally, uh, Gary, how does all of this uh, affect the effort to recall Governor Newsom? Well, make no mistake about it, Adrian. There's really three big criteria right now that are driving this recall effort, and they all revolve around the pandemic. And that is, can we get tests and vaccine and PPE, et cetera, on time? What about businesses and jobs and the economy? And third, it's schools. I mean, there's no question that that third piece that we're talking about is important. And, and uh, you know, it has been one of the major points that the proponents of the recall have been pointing out. So certainly from a political perspective as well, the governor wants to get this thing moving forward ASAP. Gary, covered a lot of ground tonight. Appreciate it as always. Talk to you soon.